All right, this is gonna be the Tolki Pika. Not sure if I'm saying either of those right, to be honest with you. Get this in frame. This is a two-piece. Um, I would have honestly preferred the one-piece, but he, what happened was I was looking and I was talking to Dan Tolki is, you know, Tolki Bowers, that's his son Jared, I guess is now a big part of the business, does a lot with online, and um, I was actually speaking with Jared online, phenomenal customer service type deal, you know, answered every question I had, very quick to reply, you gotta figure these guys are working, it's not like they're sitting at a computer waiting to answer questions from you, he's quick to get back to me, and when you call, and I spoke to Dan, you know, they both tried to help me find what I was looking for, um, and it ended up they had this 54 inch, yep, 54 inch Pika, Pika, in stock. Um, I forget the names of the woods and I want to say it's like a micarta material in the riser. You know, you're not really concerned with what bow woods I have, that makes no difference to you. But 51 at 28, which was right in my wheelhouse of what I was looking for, I draw just under 27. So this is perfect for me, for what I was looking for. That's a nice shot. It gets the woods real nice there. Look at that. Um, this is the two-piece. You've seen videos of how they go together, I'm sure. This isn't how you put the bow together, how you string it. This is more of an overview of how the bow feels and shoots and that good stuff. The two-piece has a little bit more mass in the riser because of that bolt takedown system. Which is why I probably would have preferred the one piece, to be honest, because I like light, short bows. Not that this is heavy by any means, but the lighter the better for me. Just, I'm usually walking, carrying stuff. I'm lazy, so the, the lighter the better in my mind. I'm hunting. I'm hopefully taking one shot. I'm not looking to, you know, sit out here with these bows for hours on end shooting or going through tournaments or stuff like that um i just want to give some feedback dealing with these guys though this is um you know this was a brand new bow customer service was great the fit and finish of this bow is amazing you know you're paying for a quality bow and you expect a quality bow this is again this is uh i don't know what glass he uses but if you it is a little bit more glossy than if you watched any of my other videos recently, which are actually today. Um, bear paw glass on the shrews and stuff like that, or the bonding bows, is a little bit of a satin rough feel. This is a lot smoother. A lot, you know, a little bit more glossy, but depending on the veneers, it has a toned down look to it, but smooth but the problem that comes with clear glass sometimes and i've seen this on tons of bows is you get a little bit of cloud or streaking i'm not sure if that's going to show up uh you can't see it unless you get really close in some spots you might see a little streak here and there which is fine with me i don't care i'm not going to be upset about that um i want to show the tips are very thin pointed they look Similar, they're slightly different on the bottom. It's a little bit, I'll say, more rounded. Show the bottom, do that. You know, very thin limbs, very thin tips, quick and quiet. You know, this is a, a snappy bow, I'll say, I guess. Um, draws smooth, hits hard. I don't have a chronograph set up again as the other two videos. I'm waiting for arrows shafts to come in so i could build arrows for each particular bow and really tune them then hopefully i'll get around to doing a chronograph and everything else um the bow comes with obviously the two piece you know the string has a if you can see it a tied on knocking point you're gonna have to adjust a little bit he puts cat whiskers on his strings there's that's showing up there strike plate and rest you know everything's there set up ready to shoot i want to quick say you know a testament to spending money with this guy um this is the the takedown case that he sends you this is an, um, an amazing quality this is a nice leather two compartment case with the loops this you know just i was kind of taken back when the case came with it i was thinking i was going to get like a little sleeve or something the leather on that you know you're you know 
you're spending money with this company, this guy, and he's really working to keep his quality and reputation up, which I appreciate. As far as I know, the One Piece bows come in a similar, you know, obviously a longer single sleeve, but, you know, it's a little bit above on their end, uh, which is awesome, you know. Hopefully you can see the quick profile of this bow on the ground there. Nice long bow. Um, you know, it feels good. It's light. It feels good in your hand. I will say if I balance, if I put my thumb, if you could see that, it's a slightly bottom heavy design. You know, again, hopefully this is coming up. I'm going to, you know, if you stick your finger right in that throw to the grip, the bow tips down. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad. Some people may like that. That's why I'm trying to do this was just to give some feedback and reference for people um when i was looking to buy these bows nobody had videos really posted of this type of stuff and you know it has a nice little thumb shelf here it's no leather or anything on the grip obviously it's a two-piece so that would be hard to do seamless you know gap you cannot feel that at all which is cool everyone's like oh i'm worried when i buy it you know but everyone says the same thing so you know take it as what it is it's you're not going to feel that seam you're not going to know that seam is there um, this bow, again, being the, the bottom heavy, kind of, if you're gripping it, kind of tips right in the web of your thumb, if you like that style. Um, narrow grip, you know, if you really just two finger it, get it, if you really just let it sit in there, it feels good, you know, it, it's nice on the draw, it pulls right into the web of your hand good. I'm going to go ahead and walk up to the target and lay my phone down and give you the perspective of the arrows from the targets vantage see how quiet or loud you think this is um you know i'm not going to compare it to other bows right now i'm going to let you do that um let me lay this down sorry i'm using my phone if you watch the other videos from today I'm trying to get caught up on some things i want to do here's the target i'm going to go about 12 yards take like four shots Again, these arrows are not perfectly tuned to this bow. They're close. Um, bow way more accurate than I am. I'm gonna say that again, just like I do in every video. I'm not the most accurate archer in the world, obviously. I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't even say I'm a great archer or a good archer, you know, average. These bows are more accurate than most of us are. If the bow feels good to you, great. If it doesn't, you know, it is what it is. Everyone has their favorites and their what feels good. So I'm not shooting for accuracy here. Hopefully it, all four go right in where they want. But I point shoot instinctive. I just want you to hear how loud this bow is from about 12 yards out. People talk about how loud a bow is and usually they do that from the archer's perspective. I like to do it from the target's perspective because that's what matters to me is if I'm deer hunting, what is a, a deer or a game animal gonna hear when that shot is fired between loosening the arrow and it hitting its mark, you know. So I'm gonna step back 12 yards, take a couple shots. Now, what I'm gonna say is, that was not really accurate at all, low and a little bit to the right on the grouping. Not a great grouping at all, especially for 12 yards. Um, you know, 
needs, let me pull these out of here and step back into the shade quick, needs, uh, probably needs tuning on the arrow part and the bow. Um, I didn't adjust, turn those down, I didn't, haven't adjusted the knock point or anything really, the brace height. Um, it's a good drawing bow, a smooth drawing bow. It feels clean on the release. Not the most accurate for me, but it may be for you. So I'm not going to say, again, the bow is more accurate than I am if you were to put this in some type of machine, take out the, the personal factor. Um, this is more just how loud it is. If you heard those shots from the perspective how good the craftsmanship is, I would say that's on par with excellent. Their turnaround time, you know, I didn't order a custom, but next day they got this out to me when I ordered it from them. Fit and finish is amazing. They're great to work with. You know, I'd love to get my hands on an Elkhart or um, a Troll, which I don't believe they're making anymore. From what he told me, they're not making the Troll anymore. They didn't have a lot of feedback on it. That was, I guess they, they weren't having a lot of orders on them, I should say. Um, I would even like to try an old Kestrel. I think it's what it's called. What was originally the Kestrel turned to the Troll and is now not being produced. But if you can get your hands on those... Those also look like awesome bows from them. Um, you know, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. You saw something in here that you were wondering. I'm just going to keep pointing that out or putting it around. Hopefully there was something in here that, you know, you were looking to see and saw or whatever. Um, any questions you can ask. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. Thank you.